Good day Grade 12s. Welcome to week 26 and probability. In this lesson we're just going to revise dependent and independent events because we're going to need to use this in our future lessons. So let's look at it. So if an event can occur, can only occur if a previous event has happened, then we call it a dependent event. So for example, if your mom tells you you can only have dessert if you eat all your veggies, then that is a dependent event, right? Whereas an independent event can occur even if the other event has not happened. So they could even happen simultaneously. Independent events could happen simultaneously. So for example, another example is the probability of the event occurring does not affect the probability of the other events occurring. So for example, if a coin is tossed, say you get a head the first time, if you go and toss it again, there is no guarantee that you're going to get a tail or a head because the coin is an inanimate, inanimate object and it doesn't know that it got a head the first time. Similarly, if you guess two multiple choice answers. Just because you guess the first one correctly doesn't mean that you're going to necessarily guess the second one correctly. There is no such thing as I'm on a roll, okay? It doesn't work like that. Right, so those are the differences between dependent and independent events. But we need to obviously find a way to mathematically quantify this. And it's easier to calculate independent events than dependent events. So the definition is two events A and B are independent if and only if the probability of A and B together equals the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. So let's do an example. We've got a bag and it contains five red balls and five green balls. Remove a random ball from the bag, note its color and then return it to the bag. We then remove another ball and note its color. Okay, so we've got five red, five green, pull out a ball, look at it, put it back, pull out another ball. Right, excellent. Now it says, what is the probability that the first ball is red? Well, do you see that we've got five red balls and we've got five green balls and therefore we've got ten little balls all together. So the probability that the first ball is going to be red is what? It is going to be five out of ten which is a half. Okay, awesome. Now it says what is the probability the second ball is green? Well we also have, we put all the balls back, right? We took out a ball and we put it back so there's nothing influencing it. So now do you agree that there are still five green balls and five red balls and therefore we have ten balls all together. So the probability that the second ball is going to be green is again going to be five over ten which equals a half. Okay. Now it says what is the probability that the first ball is red and the second ball is green? Well, the probability that the first ball is red is a half and the probability that the second ball is green or that the second ball is green is a half. So therefore the probability of the first being red and the second being red, green is going to be 5 over 10 times 5 over 10 or a half times a half which equals a quarter. Right. So therefore, is the fact that the first ball is red and the second ball is green independent? So this bit here is the probability of A and B happening, which equals a quarter. This here is probability of A, if we're looking at definition, and this is the probability of B. So that's our definition. Probability of A and B is equal to probability of A times the probability of B. This here is the probability of A and B. This would be the probability of A and that would be the probability of B. So the first red ball, probability of A is a half. Probability of B is a half. Then the first and the probability of A and B is a quarter. But do you see that this is a half and that's a half. So a half times a half is a quarter and therefore they are said to be independent. And that is how we can prove that events are independent. And now please make sure you understand that, understand the concept of dependent and independent um, events because we're going to need this as we move on in our probability. Thanks grade 12s, have a great day.